Hello everyone, welcome to our morning service this morning on this Mothering Sunday. Now it does seem very strange to be doing this service here in our church room and not in St Petrox and not with all of you gathered together to worship. But the wonderful thing is that we can worship still, even if we may be doing it virtually, we are still gathered together as the body of Christ here to worship our Lord. And so I would ask you just to join with me in this simple service so that we can still be the body of Christ. So just a moment of quiet as we always start our services, as we gather our thoughts and remember that God is with us wherever we are, whether we're sitting at home, whether we're sitting here in the church room like me, wherever we may be, he is with us and we are here to worship him. So there is a service sheet that has been produced and is also on this website. So if you wanted to download that and have a look at that and follow it with me, that would be lovely. But otherwise, don't worry, I'll be taking us through this service. You'll be pleased to know there won't be any hymns singing from me, but do feel free to sing your own hymns in your own heart. So I've lit this candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world, and he is with us. So let's begin our service with our opening prayer on our service sheet. Nurturing God, we light this candle in recognition of the great care and love you have for each one of us. We say together, Nurturing God, we praise and thank you. Nurturing God, we light this candle in thanksgiving for all mothers, for all they do, or once did, for all they give, or once gave, for all they mean and will always mean. Nurturing God, we praise and thank you. Nurturing God, we light this candle for all families throughout the world. Nurturing God, we praise and thank you. Nurturing God, we light this candle for the family of the church, here and everywhere. Nurturing God, we praise and thank you. Nurturing God, we light this candle for all who nurture and encourage others. Nurturing God, we praise and thank you. So now we come to worship our God, who said, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. So let us worship God, who is the comforter, and provider of all. So we come to this morning to God in humble thanks for all he is and all he's done for us, but acknowledging that we are far from perfect. And so we come to God to confess our sins, to say sorry for the things that we've done that we wish we hadn't, and for the things that we should have done that we haven't. Holy God, maker of the skies above, lowly Christ, born amidst the growing earth, spirit of life, wind over the flowing waters, in earth, sea and sky, you are there in everything we touch, in everyone we meet, your presence is around us. But when we have not touched but trampled on your creation, when we have not met but missed you in one another, when we have not received but rejected the poor, forgive us and hear our plea for mercy. Come, Redeemer of the poor, come, Light of our hearts, come, Generous Spirit, by the glory of your creation around us, by the comfort of your forgiveness within us, by the wind of your Spirit moving in this place, renew us and make us whole. In Jesus' name. So now we turn to the Bible readings for Mothering Sunday. And I'm going to read the Old Testament reading first. We don't always read the Old Testament reading, as you know, here in church. But this is a really rather special one for Mothering Sunday. It's from Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. 
the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the child went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. And our New Testament lesson is taken from the Gospel of John. John 19 verse 25b to 27. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. So today is Mothering Sunday. It probably feels rather strange, Mothering Sunday. Not coming to church, not having all the family round to celebrate. Not the usual bunches of flowers that we give out in church. It's different. And life is going to be different for a short while. But these stories remind us that God is constant and with us and loves us. Loves us like a mother, loves her children, unconditional and forever. So today, this Mothering Sunday, is a day when we can give thanks for those people who have been mother-like to us and still are. Those who care for us, those who listen to us those with the ear, the arm to put around our, sh our shoulders, those who've picked us up and dropped us off, who've done the washing, who've prepared meals for us, who've just been there for us in all the million ways that being a parent is all about. Today we give genuine and grateful thanks for all those people, whoever they are, who behave in this loving, caring way for us. It's not a day restricted only to those who have children to look after, but it's a day for us all to be grateful for those who love, nurture and sustain us. We've all had an experience of parenting one way or another. For some, it's been a very mixed experience, either as a child or a parent or both. For some, the memories of our parents are wonderful memories. We have very happy memories of love and care. For others, those thoughts will be quite difficult as the relationships haven't always been as they should have been. And for some of us, the idea of being a parent is something that's entirely absent from our lives. But we're all reminded that it's often those we're closest to in whatever capacity they're the ones where we let our barriers down, sometimes in good ways so we can show them that we love them and our real emotion, but sometimes in not so wonderful ways. It's often said we take things out on the people we love most. That's normal, that's human interaction. 
It's about feeling safe and secure. It's about knowing that the relationship will always stand, all the arguments and the stroppy attitude and the silence, because it's a relationship that hopefully is made of stronger stuff. A relationship that runs deeper than the here and now of today's particular concern or angst. It's actually what our relationship with God is all about. The Bible tells us repeatedly that God is our parent. An incredible idea that is. God, our father and mother. He loves us as a father and mother. He cares for us, tends to our needs, and will put up with our shouting and our stamping and our crying. He'll put up with our sullen silences, our refusing to communicate, because he's God. No matter what, God is there. At times when we want God to be there, and at times, you know, when we rather he wasn't. God is there in the joys, he's there in the sadness, he's there in the fears, he's there in every part of our lives, even when it seems to be going wrong. Looking at the Old Testament reading, that wonderful story of Moses' birth and his early months and years, we read of one amazing mother's love. We all know the name of her famous son, Moses, but I wonder if anyone knows her name. I'll give you a moment just to think. Do you? And don't Google it. Her name was Jochobed. Jochobed. J-O-C-H-E-B-E-D. The woman who we only know from this story, forever in the shadows of her well-known son. And yet without her selfless love, Moses would not have survived. He would have been killed like all the other boys. History as we know it would just not have happened. The Bible has other examples of this incredible mother's love. Hannah, and who was her son? Samuel. For a long time she had no children, and she promised that if she did have a child, she'd raise him up to do the work of God. And when Samuel was born, she sang a song of joy, knowing that she was about to give her son away. And when he was old enough, she took him to the priest, Eli, so that Samuel could learn to work for God. And of course, we have the most famous of mothers, the one we heard in the Gospel reading, Dear Mary. Without her saying yes to God, Jesus couldn't have been born. And as we know, she was to suffer the pain and torment of watching her son die the agonising death on the cross, wrongly accused in a sham trial and crucified, one of the most awful and painful deaths known. Stories of incredible love and selflessness that act as both examples of what human love is capable of, but it also reveals something of the love of God himself that he has for each of us. So Mothering Sunday is a wonderful time of celebration, but it's also a time for caring and thinking of others as parents care for their children, as Jochebed and Hannah and Mary care for their sons, because that caring, we also need to remember, has its costs. For each of those mothers, they were to know the pain of desperate loss. Yet all parenting, all relationships, have their costs. It's a cost of loving and being loved. God understands all this and is with us in all those dark times and wills us to a dawn of a new time when our relationship with him will be perfect. This is the parenting that God offers us unconditionally, without us earning it or being worthy of it, but simply because God is God and he is love. The God who rejoices at each of us is also the God who sustains us in our difficult times. 
That's the nature of the parenthood we're celebrating today. As children of God, an offer made to every single one of us that he will love us and be with us every day. And in the days ahead for each one of us, that may be something we need to hold on to. That he loves us unconditionally. And no matter what we go through, he will go through it with us. And as a parent's love, he will wrap us in his arms, and underneath his everlasting arms will hold us. There's a chorus we sing with the children, and I'm sure you all remember it. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Now, I said we weren't going to sing any hymns, but we are going to sing a chorus. And you can cringe in the privacy of your own home, but you can also give it some welly. So I'm going to lead us in a rendition of Jesus' love is very wonderful, because you cannot have a service without some singing. And you'll have to bear with me, but please do drown me out as you sing yourself. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. Now, if I can make a fool of myself, so can you. Join in. So as we celebrate and give thanks for all those who have shown us such wonderful mother-like love in our own lives, as we seek to show this to others, and never was there a time where we needed to show this love more to our neighbours, to those we meet, that they may be sustained and encouraged by the fact that they know that someone cares for them. Let's also celebrate the wonderful love that God offers to each of us. It's too high, it's too low, it's too wide, for us ever to escape and because of that we can be assured we are wrapped forever in God's everlasting love. Amen. So now we come to God for a time of prayer and we start with the collect for this particular Mothering Sunday. God of compassion whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily life, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence, to bind together and to heal, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. And so now we pray. And the response to our prayers is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, we bring to you our concerns, concerns for ourselves and those we love, our concerns for the world and our sisters and brothers in the worldwide family to which we all belong. We pray for all children in the world, that they may feel affirmed and listened to, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for those who live in areas where daily life is difficult due to war, famine or disease. And we think this morning particularly for all who are struggling because of the effects of coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our families, for mothers or fathers struggling to bring up children alone, for families under strain, poor, homeless, or unable to cope, and for parents whose children have died or who are separated from them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who long for children, but for whom this is not possible. May God strengthen and affirm all whose lives take a path different from the one they expected to take and let them know they are loved and needed by
by others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the family of the church, for all who work for the building up of God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to, for the people in our lives who have encouraged us, changing our lives in often small but important ways. May God make us gentle, directing our lives so that we may look to the good in others and leading us in the ways of reconciliation so that we may see peace and justice across the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so now let's join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now, as we come to the end of this short service, I say the closing prayer. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and all whom you love, this day and always. Amen. And so as we finish our service here in St Petrox, may I wish you all God's blessing. May you know his love and peace with you. And I look forward to when we will be able to worship together again. God bless, keep safe and see you next week.